So in this example, we're going to examine a two-dimensional elastic collision. So let's suppose that a proton traveling with velocity 9.0 times 10 to the 5 meters per second collides elastically with a second proton that is stationary. Now one of the proton moves away at an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the x-axis. We want to find the angle of the second proton as well as the final velocities of the two objects, the two protons, after our elastic collision takes place. So our stationary proton, our moving proton collides with the stationary proton and the two protons move away with some unknown velocities v1 prime and v2 prime. Now we know the angle that the first proton makes with respect to our x-axis, that angle is 60 degrees. We want to find not only the final velocities v1 and v2 prime, but also the angle theta that proton number 2 makes with respect to the x-axis. So we have three unknowns and that means to solve for our three unknowns, we have to have three equations. So because we are dealing with an elastic collision, that means we have the conservation of kinetic energy as well as the conservation of momentum. So let's look at the conservation of kinetic energy. So the sum of the kinetic energies of the two protons before the collision is equal to the sum of the kinetic energies of the two protons after our collision. Now, notice the one-halves appear on each term and that means the one-halves cancel. Likewise, the m, the mass of the proton, is identical for proton number one and proton number two. So the m's also cancel. Now, because our second proton is assumed to be stationary, v2 is zero. So this entire term goes to zero and we're left with the following final equation. So if we take the square of our initial velocity of proton number two, that's equal to the sum of the squares of the final velocities of the two objects. So we have the following equation and let's label this equation equation number one. Now, Let's look at the conservation of momentum. So recall that momentum is a vector and that means we're going to have x component vectors and y component vectors. So if we look at these two vectors, each of these will have an x component and a y component. So let's begin with the x-axis. So we have the sum of the momentum of the two objects before the collision takes place. M1V1 plus M2V2 is equal to the sum after our collision takes place. So MV1 prime cosine of 60 plus MV2 prime cosine of the angle theta. If we look at the y-axis, we have the sum of our momentum along the y-axis before the collision takes place is equal to the sum of our y-component momentum vector after our collision takes place. MV1 plus MV2 is equal to MV1 prime sine of the angle theta, or actually sine of the angle 60, plus MV2 uh, prime sine of the angle theta. So, notice that this equation equals this because the m's will cancel out on each term and v2 goes to zero, so we have v1 equals to v1 prime cosine 60 plus v2 prime cosine theta. So let's call this equation two. And this becomes, well, neither of the objects are actually moving along the y-axis. So that means these two terms go to zero. So we have zero equals the m's cancel and we're left with v1 prime sine 60 plus v2 prime sine of the angle theta. Let's call this equation equation number three. So we have three unknowns and three equations. So that means we can solve for each of our unknowns.
So let's begin with equation number two. So here we have equation number two, and we want to bring this entire term to the left side. So we have v1 prime minus, or v1 minus v1 prime cosine of the angle 60 is equal to v2 prime cosine of the angle theta. Now we square both sides. So we square this term and we multiply out, we get the following result, and we square this term. So we get v1 squared minus 2v1 times v1 prime times cosine of the angle 60 plus v2 prime squared cosine squared of the angle 60 is equal to v2 prime squared cosine 2 theta, cosine squared theta. So let's label this equation as equation number 4. Now, let's take equation number 3 and let's bring this term to the other side. So we get v1 prime sine of the angle 60 equals minus or negative v2 prime sine of the angle theta. Now notice that if we square both sides, we get the following result. So we get v1 prime squared sine of the angle squared 60 or sine squared 60 is equal to v2 prime squared sine squared theta. So let's call this equation 5. So now we add 4 and 5 together. So we add 4 and 5. So we get the following result. So we add the left side and the left side and the right side and the right side. So we get the following equation. So v1 squared minus 2v1, v1 prime cosine of the angle 60 plus v1 prime squared uh, cosine of the angle 60 squared plus v1 prime squared sine of the angle 60 squared. Notice we can take out the v1 prime squared because they appear on both sides and we get the following result. v1 prime squared multiplied by cosine squared 60 plus sine squared 60 is equal to, we add the right and right sides and notice that v2 prime squared appears on both sides so we can take them out and we get the following result v2 prime squared multiplied by sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta and recall the following identity. So we have sine of the angle uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is always equal to 1. So that means these two quantities are both equal to 1. So this becomes 1, this becomes 1 and we have the following equation v1 prime minus 2v1 v1 prime cosine of the angle 60 plus this becomes 1 and this becomes 1 v1 prime squared equals v2 prime squared. Let's call this equation number 6. Now we take equation number 1 and we arrange equation number 1 to the following form. So, we express v2 prime squared in terms of v1 squared and the v1 prime squared. Let's call this equation 7. Now we take equation 7 and plug it into equation number 6. So we plug v2 prime squared, this whole term, into the following result, into this side. And we are left with v1 squared minus 2v1 v1 prime cosine of the angle 60 plus uh, v1 prime squared. So this whole side, the left side, is equal to v2 prime squared, which is also equal to this side. So v1 squared minus v1 prime squared. So we get this from equation number one. Now we can rearrange the equation. So we notice that one of the terms cancel. So the v1 squared and v1 squared will cancel out because they appear on both sides. So we're left with negative 2 v1 v1 prime cosine angle 60 is equal to negative v1 prime squared. The negatives cancel and we add this to this side so this becomes negative 2. So the negatives cancel. We have 
2 V1 V1 prime cosine of angle 60 equals 2 V1 prime squared. So the 2's cancel. We can cancel one of the V1 primes because they appear on both sides. And we're left with the following result. V1 prime multiplied by cosine of the angle 60 is equal to V1 prime. So we are looking for V1 prime. We know what V1 is. It's 9 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So if we plug that in and we multiply that by cosine of the angle 60, which is simply 0.5, we get 4.5 times 10 to the 5 meters per second is the final velocity after our collision of object number 1 of proton 1. Now, we take equation number 1 and we notice that we know what V1 is and we know what V1 prime is. So that means we can solve for V2 prime. So we have V2 prime is equal to the square root of the sum of the difference V1 squared minus V1 prime squared and that equals 7.8 times 10 to the 5 meters per second is the final velocity of the second proton after our collision takes place. So, notice that the proton number 2 has a greater velocity than proton number 1 because, as it will turn out, the angle is smaller. So now let's calculate the angle. To calculate the angle, we have to use equation number 3. So we rearrange equation number 3 to get the following result. Sine of the angle theta is equal to negative V1 prime times sine of the angle 60 divided by V2 prime. So we know what V1 prime is, we know what V2 prime is, so we plug that into our equation and we take the inverse of the trigonometric sine function of that value. So we get the following value and we plug that into our calculator and we get approximately an angle of 30 degrees. So that means our two velocities of the objects after our collision will take place is uh, 7.8 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So V2 prime is that value. V1 prime is given by 4.5 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. And the angle of the second proton with respect to the x-axis is 30 degrees.